Hello everyone, today inshallah we are going to continue studying the second part from chapter 1 in unit 3 circular motion this chapter known as laws of circular motion in this part we are going to talk about laws of circular motion when a force acting continuously on a body moving in a circular path normally or perpendicular to the direction of motion in this case the magnitude of velocity remains constant the value of velocity doesn't change but the direction of velocity remains changing during the path of the object in a circular path the change in the direction of velocity leads to the existence of a kind of acceleration known as centripetal acceleration when the object moves in a circular path the speed remains constant, the magnitude of velocity remains constant, but the direction of velocity changes. Due to the change in the direction of velocity, which is a vector physical quantity, we have a kind of acceleration known as centripetal acceleration. Here, when the object moves in a circular path, its direction changes from moment to another, like the rotation of the moon around the Earth in a circular path. Here, the direction of velocity changes as the time passes from a moment to another. The change in the direction of velocity leads to the existence of a type of acceleration known as centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration it is acceleration acquired by an object moving in a circular path due to the continuous change in the direction of velocity. Remember, The direction of centripetal acceleration is the same direction of centripetal force. The effect of the force toward the center, the effect of acceleration toward the center, so the direction of force and acceleration toward the center, which is perpendicular to the direction of tangential velocity. The direction of centripetal acceleration and centripetal force is always perpendicular to the direction of motion, which is the direction of velocity as we can see here. How we can calculate the centripetal acceleration? Calculating the centripetal acceleration. When an object moves in a circular path from point A toward point B, if the object moves in a circular path of radius R, here the object moves from point A, which have a velocity V in this direction, when the object moves from A to B, its direction changes from B from A to B. The direction of velocity will be in B's direction. Here, we if we draw a straight line joining between two points A and B, this straight line we will call it delta L. And we have here an angle theta exists between the two radii of the circle. By drawing a triangle of velocity, which represent the direction of velocity here, delta P represent the change in the direction of velocity that acts toward the center of the circle. Here, through the similarity between the two triangles here, we have two similar triangles. The velocity here is equal to equal sides, and we have angle theta between them. And here, we have the triangle ABC. We have two equal sides which are the two radii of the circle and we have an angle theta between them. Here from the similarity of the two triangles say C, A, B and the triangle of velocity, we can get the following. Delta L, the side exists in front of the angle theta, divided by any one of the two radii of the circle R, equal delta V, the side in front of the angle in the triangular of velocity, divided by V, which is one of the two equal sides. Here, where delta V directed toward the center of a circle, here, if we move the velocity from this side toward the other side of the equation, we can get that delta V equal delta L over, over R times V. If the body moves from point A toward point B in a time period equal delta T, so, the centripetal acceleration can be calculated by divided by the both sides of the equation by delta t. 
here the acceleration delta v over delta t which is acceleration equal delta l times velocity over delta t times r here remember since in acceleration the acceleration equal delta v over delta t and the change in distance delta l over delta t which is a velocity we can get the following acceleration we will replace this part delta v over delta t by the acceleration and we will change this part delta l over delta t by velocity we can get this formula a equal v times v over r so finally we can get this rule acceleration equal v power 2 divided by r here if we uh, put this relation in a magic triangle we can get this magic triangle here the acceleration center to acceleration and here square of tangential velocity and we will put finally the radius here so a equal p power 2 square of tangential velocity divided by the radius of a circle here the radius of a circle equals square of tangential velocity divided by the acceleration and finally we can get the tangential velocity p power 2 equal a times r now we are going to talk about factors affecting centripetal acceleration the two factors affecting centripetal acceleration we can get them from this magic triangle a equal v power 2 over r the first factor which is the tangential velocity centripetal acceleration is directly proportional to the square of tangential velocity here we have a graphic representation between acceleration and tangential velocity a and v power 2 if we get the slope slope here equal delta a divided by delta v power 2 which equal to 1 over r 1 over the radius of the circular path second factor which affect the, the centripetal acceleration which is the radius of rotation the centripetal acceleration is inversely proportional to the radius of rotation a is inversely proportional to 1 over the radius a is inversely proportional to the radius of the rotation if we pull it a graph between acceleration and 1 over r we can get the straight line the slope of this straight line give me the square of tangential velocity slope here equal delta a over delta 1 over r which equal to v power 2 so we can calculate also the value of tangential linear velocity by this way we are going to talk about how we can calculate the value of linear tangential velocity or tangential linear velocity when an object moves in a circular path the direction of velocity changes continuously so we have a kind of acceleration the object here moves in a circular path so if a body completes one circular rotation revolution during a time interval equal t so this time is known as periodic time which is the time taken by the object that moves in a circular path to make one complete revolution again the periodic time the time taken to make one complete revolution so we can get that the periodic time equal the time in second divided by the number of revolution t capital equal t small divided by n so the object moves in a circular path therefore the distance equal to the circumference of a circle the circumference of the circular path that the object moves which equal to 2 times by times the radius of the circle therefore tangential velocity can be calculated the velocity of rotation can be calculated by this way v equal distance divided by time the distance here equal to the circumference of the circle divided by the periodic time so we can get this rule v equal 2 by r divided by t the tangential velocity equal 2 times by times the radius of rotation divided by t which is the periodic time we can calculate this periodic time time in seconds t small divided by the number finally how we can calculate the value of centripetal force the centripetal force when an object moves in a circular path 
the force that keeps the object moves in a circular path known as centripetal force. How we can calculate the centripetal force? According to Newton's second law of motion, which is given by this relation, the force can be given by this relation, F equal mass times acceleration. Since the acceleration here, since the object moves in a circular path, the acceleration here equal to V power 2 divided by the radius. So therefore, force equal MV power 2 divided by R. Here we replace the acceleration by this value V power 2 divided by R. So finally we can get this rule F equal MV power 2 divided by the radius of the circle. Here we have a solved example. A stone of mass 600 gram is attached to a string of length 10 cm. Rotating at velocity 3 m per second, calculate the centripetal force. What do you expect if the maximum tension force that the string can afford is 50 newton? The maximum force that the string can handle equal 50 newton. Here we have many tricky parts in this solid example. Here we have mass in gram. We need to convert them. And here we have the lens in centimeter. We need to convert them before starting to solve the problem. Here, the given solution. Given mass here in gram, to convert it into kilogram, we are going to divide the number here, 600 by 1000. So the mass in kilogram equals 0 0.6 kilogram. While the radius in centimeter, we need to convert it into meter. To convert the radius from centimeter to meter, we are going to divide the number by 100. Here, 10 divided by 100 equals 0 0.1 meter. Finally, here, the velocity meter per second, we, there is no need to convert them. It is a suitable unit. So we can find the force which can be calculated from the rule force equal mv power 2 over r here force equal mass which is 0 0.6 kilogram times v power 2 which is 3 power 2 divided by the radius which is 0 0.1 so finally you can get the force equal 54 newton here the force generated in the string equal 54 newton but wait what do you expect if the maximum tension force that the string can handle effort is 50 newton the maximum force 50 newton so the sense the required centripetal force is more than the maximum tension force that the string can afford therefore the string will be cut the stone moves in a straight line at the moment of cutting the string tangent to the circular path. So the string will be cut. Why? Because the force generated in the string will be more than the force that the, that the string can handle. Now we are going to talk about factors affecting centripetal force. Here from the rule F equal mv bar 2 over r. The first factor here we are going to talk about it is a tangential velocity. Here the centripetal force is directly proportional to the square of tangential velocity. If we call it a graph between force and tangential velocity, square of tangential velocity, it is represented by a straight line. These, the slope of this graph equal to delta F over delta V part 2, which equal to the mass divided by the radius. The second factor here, the radius of rotation. The centripetal force is inversely proportional to the radius of rotation. Here, if we pull it a graph between force and 1 over r, it is represented by a straight line. The slope of this straight line equal to delta f divided by delta 1 over r, which equal to the mass times square of velocity. Here, finally, the third factor, which is the mass. Centripetal force is directly proportional to the mass of the object. Here we have a direct relation between force and mass. If we pull it a graph between force on y-axis and mass on the x-axis, we can get a straight line. 
the slope of these straight line equal delta f divided by delta m equal to v power 2 over r. This is the three factors that affecting centripetal. This is the end of part two. See you soon, inshallah, in the next part, and good luck.